So here's where it all started. I got these two massive cottonwood slabs almost two years ago up in Fargo at Dakota Timber Company without a real plan in mind. The cool thing about these two slabs is they were uh, the, the second and third slab or uh, when they were getting cut or milled, they were one on top of the other, which means that they have a book match finish on them. If I were to glue these together, uh, you would see like a mirrored finish on both sides. So that's the cool part about them. And that's what I'm going to do here is straight line rip both of them so that I can actually glue them back together as one big unit. And of course, my track saw just didn't quite have enough depth to get through the entire slab, so I had to finish this whole thing with a handsaw. Nothing like some good old hard work to get a project started off. So I just finished ripping this slab with my track saw and I got a nice clean edge here and how these slabs are going to sit after I cut this second slab is actually the inverse of what you're looking at right here. Both of these slabs are going to get flipped the other way and the edges that I just cut will get pushed together and that's going to give us that book match look. You're going to see uh, these cool voids on each side that you see right now. They're going to be kind of that mirrored image uh, on the outer edge of the door. This will make a lot more sense once you see it uh, after it's all been glued together. All right, here's kind of the first look of what this door is going to essentially look like. Now, the opening to, or the opening where this door is going to cover is about 48 inches. So I needed everything to be a minimum of 50 inches. And there's a couple spots like right here across to here is the most narrow spot and that's sitting right at 50. And it gets quite a bit wider, upwards of 60 towards the bottom. But this kind of gives you an idea of how large this thing is gonna be and how beautiful it's gonna be. I can't wait to see how this turns out, you guys. I wasn't able to record any of the glue up for this door, but I had a friend, Grayson, come over and give me a hand because it was impossible to do all by myself. And I used every clamp I have in my shop, and then I started sanding, and I didn't log how many hours I have on this, but it was a ton. I started with 80, then went to 100, then finished with 120. And I know some people are going to be upset about this, but my wife wanted to stain this door dark to kind of match all of the walnut in our house. This is the only thing that is not walnut. And I can't emphasize how important it is to use a pre-stained wood conditioner. It just gives you a nice even stain so you don't have blotchy, dark, and light areas. And with this timber, I knew it was going to be necessary just because there already is a lot of depth and change in color. And here it is after it had been stained. We use the Minwax Special Walnut Stain. My biggest fear was that the stain was going to wash out or hide all of the figure in this slab, and I think it did quite the opposite, and it almost enhanced everything. And then we finished it with Rubio Mono Coat Pure, just to give it a protective wax coating. I do want to say that Rubio does not recommend putting their finish over anything other than Rubio products. I went ahead and did it anyways, and it turned out just fine.
So next I'm going to install this header or support beam across the top of the opening. This will just give everything a lot more strength. Uh, I do want to mention that there's a 2x8 header above the opening of this door. And then I put 2x6 blocking at 8 feet and at 4 feet along these walls in between the studs to give this wall extra strength for a door this size. If this was just a standard wall, I wouldn't recommend hanging something this heavy from it. I knew I was going to hang a heavy door in this opening, so I reinforced the wall ahead of time. I'll be using torque screws into every stud along this wall, and then the leg bolts will also go through the studs as well. Just want to do a little strength test uh, before we mount the door on here. <laughs> So I didn't get much video actually mounting the rail onto our header block here, but from Rustica Hardware, we ordered this rail system and they come with these adjustable spacers. This is just plastic and then this is a huge leg bolt that goes in like probably almost three quarters of the way through the header of this opening here. The cool thing about these is depending on how wide your door is, or even if your wall is uneven, you can thread this piece in or out and it's completely adjustable. Um, the one thing I do want to mention is across the header here for this opening, we were fine. The holes didn't really matter because we were hitting a, a two by eight header. But as we worked our way over, I ended up having to drill my own holes through the metal and then run these legs directly into the studs that we hit. And I lined up all my studs with, or I marked all my studs by uh, putting the screws right on them for that header board. So you'll see like an open hole here, but that's just because I drilled a, a new hole here and then another new hole over there. You never ever ever want to fasten something like this only to the sheetrock or only to this header uh, board here. Uh, it just doesn't have enough strength to hold up something heavy. So definitely make sure you hit your studs for something like this. So it's installation day for the uh, rolling brackets for our sliding door. Uh, you need a 9 16th socket and a 7 30 seconds Allen wrench and I might have mentioned this before, but these rollers, you need to have two and five eighths of an inch from the top of the door here to the bottom of this roller to give you enough clearance to put it onto the actual rail easily. So I'm going to fasten both of the rollers onto the door and then get everything ready for delivering it into the house. Good morning, it's a beautiful day out in the shop. Um, days like this, I always get a lot of anxiety and I always get worked up. Uh, and that is because today is delivery day. And the one good thing about this delivery is it's just going into my house, maybe a hundred yards away. But the bad thing is this is a huge door. I'm not a hundred percent sure how we're going to get it through our doorway into the living room, but I've got my brother and my dad coming over to give me a hand. We have the skid steer on site and we're going to use the pallet forks i think i'm going to just wrap them in bubble wrap and then throw some moving blankets down on those getting it into the garage is going to be the easy part but then from the garage tipping the door on its side getting it into the doorway over that uh, door sill is going to be the hard part not scraping any walls not scraping any uh, not scraping the door on the way in, all that stuff uh, gets me really worked up. And um, for those of my buddies that help me out on moving days, they know I'm just not quite the same. I just get really, really worked up about it. I just hope everything goes well. And I always think of like worst case scenarios that could happen and it just kind of messes with me. If you're a woodworker and you go through the same stuff, let me know in the comments below. Uh, maybe I'm the only one, but I'm hoping today goes smoothly. We're just gonna take our time and fingers crossed we can get that door hung up. We successfully loaded the door up on the pallet forks of the Bobcat. Like I said, I used bubble wrap and moving blankets to protect the door. 
We stopped right outside the garage and lifted it up onto two rolling carts, which we used to get into the actual house itself. We didn't get much footage because it was a little bit chaotic and we were just concerned at getting everything in safely. And with a lot of effort and help from my dad and brother, we were able to get the door up and onto the rail. Unfortunately, you might have picked up from watching this clip here, there's a large gap at the bottom of the door and it's too tall for the guide rail system to work. So we had to take it back down and lower the actual rail system about two inches to make that gap at the bottom of the door that you see here much smaller and compatible with the guide rails which prevent the bottom of the door from moving in or out and they just keep it moving uh, nice and straight. All right, we got the door all hung up and we are loving it. And up next is to mount the handle. We got this big 14 inch handle. It's really simple and kind of a modern look. I got my laser set up so I can keep this nice and level because it's impossible to square something up on these live edge slabs. And I'm gonna put it at about this height here. And our living room is a little bit of a mess right now, but here it is. The space is coming together so nicely and we are near completion. Just a little bit of trim work left along the baseboards, but here's the door and the fireplace and we get to sit on our couch and admire both of them every single night. Uh, I imagine this space when I was planning out this house build about a year ago, and it's just cool to take something that you have on paper or in your head and make it come to life. Our goal was always to come up with new ideas that are unique to just us and to have a house unlike anybody else's. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the sliding uh, barn door project. This turned out better than I could have imagined. It was a blast to build. And from the moment I bought these slabs, I knew they were going to be something special. It was so fun to see them really come to life with our stain and our Rubio on them. Uh, I really appreciate everybody watching and I hope you love this as much as I do. Do me a favor and like and subscribe this video if you've been enjoying my content. I've got a few more build videos in the mix and I really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next